Um, so today we are going to paint this. I brought my real peacock leaf just to have as inspiration here. Um, I started sketching earlier. So I'm just going to kind of show you guys this and we'll sketch it um, onto our, our painted, our canvas as well. But I kind of wanted to go over kind of the construction of the, um, of the peacock feather. So you kind of start with a teardrop shape and then it's got some of the inner shapes inside of it. Um, so we'll do kind of like, we'll do the teardrop, we'll do like a kind of sideways oval shape. And then I like to think of the middle of the peacock feather. It kind of looks like, this one's a little hard to see, but it kind of looks like an upside down heart is how I like to think of it. But these are such fun colors. I'm not going to make mine exactly like this real version. Um, I'm going to make it a little bit more colorful and bold. Um, but that's kind of what we're going to do today. And then whenever I'm sketching, I just kind of draw myself little notes of like, I know I want the out, outside line, lime green. This is going to be kind of like a greenish brown. And then, of course, teal. And then the inner color, I'm going to do like a navy and purple with that. Hey, Sheila said, I love the t-shirt you did last year. Thank you. Yeah, hopefully we're going to be able to get some new merchandise together too. And those proceeds will also go to help um, the children's home as well. Hey, Miss Karina, I was just talking about rice bowls and our partnership with you guys. Karina is with Rice Bowls. And we're talking about gearing up for our trip to Honduras. Um, and I'm getting excited. So now is like the planning stage where I start coming up with the ideas of what we're going to do with the kids. We try to do something different with them every time we go. Um, and we've got a few ideas that we're working on. Um, and I would love, if any of you have any experience with kids or doing activities with them, I'd love to just get your ideas in the comments as well. Um, so I've picked out a few colors that I think I'm going to use. These are all deco art. I might use, I think this is a new lemon yellow that I got from them. It's very different from the other yellows that I have. It's really pale. Um, and then I also have, I figured I had to grab it. It's called Peacock Pearl. And this is a metallic paint by Deco Art as well. Um, so I'm gonna leave those there for just a second. I'm gonna go grab a purple um, and maybe like a dark blue off my paint wall. Um, and then of course I'm gonna use black as well because I want this to have a really dark background so that the peacock feather really is vibrant and shows up on the page. Um, so give me just a second and I'm gonna grab those colors. So I just grabbed a few, I've obviously got my white and my black will set over here. Um, again, I don't know if I'm going to use all these. I'm just grabbing what I think I want. So I've got purple iris, which is just a really dark purple, ultra blue deep and perfect peri. This is one of my favorite colors, kind of matches my nails. Um, so I think these are the colors that I'm going to start with. I may end up grabbing another hot pink or something. Pull these over here. And I'll show you guys my palette once I start like mixing colors and stuff as well. Okay, I am going to grab got my pencil and I've got a Sharpie. Sharpies are waterproof, so you can use these when you're kind of sketching out your design. I'm going to put a loose sketch on here and then 
we're gonna paint the background, but I wanna do it this way so you guys can see me actually sketch the design of the feather um, instead of me doing it over top of the dark background with a piece of chalk, because I think that's just gonna be a little bit harder for you to see. So this is the way we're gonna do it today. Who on here has painted a peacock feather before? The first thing we're gonna do is our kind of teardrop shape. And I'm just kind of thinking about how I want this to go across the canvas. So I am painting on, I believe this is a 12 by 16 um, canvas today. So in the portrait, so we've got it nice and long vertically. Um, but I'm gonna start with my kind of teardrop shape trying to decide if I want it to go that way. Maybe more like this. So kind of allows my, my feathers to kind of flourish up in that corner. I always make mine a little, little extra. Um, so we've got our basic teardrop shape and then we want the stem kind of coming down from there. So, um, you can see like, obviously on the real one, just kind of has like a slight curve to it. I kind of want mine to have a little bit more. So when you're doing stuff like this, these light sketches, all these different lines don't really matter. You're just kind of getting your loose ideas down there. Um, I recommend having a kneaded eraser handy um, so that you can erase any lines if you want to uh, although we're painting over this so it's really not necessary but maybe just for your own your own sake so i'm trying to decide do i want the peacock feather to go across that way or this way i think we'll just make it kind of more whimsical and have it go across in more of a curve. Because we can make it however we want. So a kneaded eraser is uh, fantastic to have if you do any drawing or sketching. This is the number one eraser I would recommend using. So we've got our teardrop shape in there, right? So now I'm going to do kind of like a sideways oval. It's going to start with a slight kind of arch at the top. It just kind of curves on the bottom. So this shape, that turquoise shape is kind of what I'm doing there. It's a kneaded eraser. Um, I got that off of Amazon. It was like a six pack, I think. And then I'm going to do kind of like an upside down heart here. It doesn't have a point really on the end, but you kind of have that heart shape. And then to help you guys kind of see this a little bit better, I'm just going to go over with a Sharpie. So even with my Sharpie, you can tell I'm still doing kind of a sketch like shape here and I'm going to do a little outline around this edge so that's where I'm going to put that lime green over here it's kind of in this skinny little border then this will be more of like the brownish green color then we have our teal and then our navy like cobalt blue in the center there And then for the feathers, they um, you don't have to draw these lines on. This is really the only shape we need. But the feathers are going to come out kind of like this all the way around. So for today, after I get the paint on, I am going to go ahead and do those lines. We'll do some with paint and we will do some with paint pens, which the first time I did this painting years and years ago, I didn't even use paint pens. Um, so I'm really anxious to 
add that element to this painting. So that is kind of like your, your base sketch for a peacock feather. And now we're gonna get some paint and we're gonna start with the background. And I'm gonna get some black on here. So there are a couple different ways that um, you guys can participate. If you are interested in learning more about Honduras, um, we actually do still have some spots left on our trip. So if you want to go serve and be a part of our team out there, um, we will um, put that link in the comments for you to go check out that information. Um, we are going to be there uh, June Oh, I'm messing up on my dates. June 23rd through the 30th. Okay. It's a seven day trip. That's Stacy that I'm talking to. She's going back with us too. Um, but yes, we do have some spots left. Um, I just got an email from Johnny this morning um, saying they have a few more um, spots from airports where he can get the um, the group rate that he got for the rest of us who have signed up so far. Um, so um, Lynn, if you will put that link, um, perfect. Uh, that is the informational video, which I will show you here shortly. Um, but there is a link, Lynn, that um, it was the other one that I sent you that takes them to the actual application page. Um, so if you have questions about that, um, feel free to text me or email in um, and ask me um, whatever you wanna know. You can ask me questions here on the live and I can talk about it. Um, so you obviously will need a passport. Um, we don't have any COVID restrictions anymore. Those have all been lifted, thank goodness. We are excited about that. Um, but it is a week of really just going and loving on kids. Um, we are working on what exactly we're gonna do with them this time. Um, but just to kind of give you an idea of what a typical day looks like, um, we wake up on, let's see, get there Saturday again. We'll, so we'll go, right, our first full day is Sunday again, right? Yeah, because we'll get there Saturday. Okay. And then they usually get to like the kids will meet us at our little the the, the casino right yeah. at night and then our first whole day we go to church and we yeah, so um our first we usually get there on a Saturday, um get situated. The kids are usually meeting us at uh, Casa Verde, which is where we all stay on the property. Um, and they do a little song for us and they're so excited to have people come see them. And then um, Sunday is one of my favorite days there. Uh, on the property, they have their own church and we walk up the hill and go to church with them on Sunday. And then it's just really a day of hanging out and playing with the kids. This is our, this will be different for us, this trip. Um, usually they have school Monday through Friday. And um, so we work on projects while they're in school, but this trip um, is our first one that we're going on through summer. So we get all kinds of extra time with the kids, um, which means more fun projects and activities, outdoor stuff. Um, last time we went, we painted a mural on the side of their library that turned out so cute. Um, and I have a feeling we'll be doing um, another one, if not more than one, while we're here on this trip as well, because it's so fun to, you know, just add that, um, that fun element to their buildings instead of them just being a plain color, something happy and colorful. And the kids had so much fun um, just being a part of that with us and getting to participate and paint on that mural as well. Yes. Um, yeah, Stacy was just saying, um, Johnny was mentioning that there is a $250 scholarship um, for those last few spots um, out of those 
airports as well. So if you are interested, um, you will fill out that application that Lynn has put in the comments and then you will go ahead and, and submit it. And then he has to check flights and make sure that there are flights from where you are from that are within the Rice Bowls budget. But yeah, if there are, then he also has a couple scholarships available to help go towards your trip as well. Okay, so we've got just a really nice dark background here. I took some black and that ultra deep blue, some of the purple, and I'm just kind of mixing it and laying those brush strokes down. I did darker around the edges just because I kind of like the way that that looks. So I'm going to let this dry for just a second. Maybe pull the blow dryer out to speed up that process. And I'm just using the big filbert brush out of my brush set too. Um, I like the filbert because it has the curved edge and I kind of like the brush strokes that it leaves behind like that. So it's tempting to just want to keep adding paint at this time because, you know, we're just not super patient, but all you're going to do is if you keep adding on wet paint on top of wet paint, you, um, you're just really spreading the paint around. It's not gonna help with your coverage and help you get rid of these brush strokes that you see. So you wanna let that dry first before you do that. Um, I am going to show you guys, while we're letting this dry, um, I am going to show you the um, video that shares a little bit more about what Honduras is like, what specifically Good Shepherd Children's Home is like. Um, this was done by one of our girls at the orphanage. Um, Lily is the voice that you're going to hear. Let me pull this up. And if you'll just let me know, I, I just want to make sure that you guys can hear it once I hit play. Good Shepherd Children's Home is located in the mountains of Honduras. It's a safe place for children like me, Lily, to grow up and learn. There is a lot of land here for us to play and explore, with a cafeteria, school, church, and a clinic to meet all of our needs. You are going to love it here. We have 32 beds in our guest house with everything you need. We really like it when our friends come to enjoy a Honduran meal with us. It's a great time for us to get to know each other. There are many opportunities for you to come serve the children and assist our staff. Holding one of the little kids, playing a game with us, swinging us on the playground, or just helping fold a lot of laundry. You could even help me with my homework. Don't worry, I'll help just take good care of you. Bring a team with you or just join one of our teams. You will have the trip of a lifetime. <laughs> Welcome to Good Shepherd Children's Home. Come visit with us. We are waiting to see you in Honduras. Oh, I just love her sweet voice. Um, so that um, 
gives you a little bit more detail of what it looks like in Honduras, what you can expect there. Um, it is one of the most beautiful and peaceful places um, that you will ever go. I love it. It's tucked in the mountains, literally in the middle of nowhere, so that the children are protected and kept safe. And we get up in the morning and we have our coffee and we sit on the porch and um, just soak in that view. A lot of you have asked about my tattoo, which from this angle might be a little weird, but that is um, mountains. And my oldest daughter, Kylie, and I got matching tattoos after our first trip to Honduras last year, um, just as our reminder um, to go and be the feet of Jesus, to go love on these kids. Um, and that's really what it's all about. When I think about them and the initial thing that um, made me you know, want to go and share with them was art. And I wanted to share that with them. And then what I found once I was there, especially going back a second time, is art and painting and the crafts. All of that is just a vessel. That is the vessel that God has chosen to use through me um, and how I can reach out to others and spread his love and his joy. But it is really just something to engage the kids so that we can build a relationship with them. And what it is really, really about it's just giving them love, giving them love that otherwise they would not have if people like us don't go out there and show them what God's love is. And I think it's just such a huge opportunity for us to be able to do that. And they will just melt your heart um, and you will fall in love with them and you will want to bring them home. And um, I just look forward to going back um, every year and continuing to um, strengthen our relationship with them and watch them grow up. It's, um, it's just so exciting um, to be a part of it. And when we went back that second time, you know, it was so different because they're used to people coming one time and then not seeing them again. But for us to come back and for them to see familiar faces, the joy that they had on their faces when we showed up that second time and the the closer that we got um, because it built trust and they were like oh they really do care about me they're back um it was just it was just amazing and i just want to say one just a huge thank you for how supportive um, our social easel community has been um, with this outreach you guys have been an amazing support system and um, even if you can't go you can still be a part of this mission um, with us by joining the paint party that we have coming up um, for our cute little be the light you just by joining this paint party that we're going to do next week um, for only twenty dollars a hundred percent of that is going to go back to rice bowls and good shepherds children home um, and funding our travel and all the supplies that we need to do those fun things with the kids. Um, you can help by just being a part of that paint party. And then the closer we get to the event, um, we will also have um, an opportunity to purchase items off of our Amazon wish list. But I mean, the support that you guys give has just been so phenomenal over the years. And I can't wait to share it with you guys again um, for this trip, how our house fills up with the donations of things that we're sending um, and bringing to Honduras with us. Um, and um, inside the um, Facebook group, I can't openly share um, because we have to protect the children, their faces and um, on public pages like the social easels. So what this be the light um, paint party that we're gonna do next week um, inside that group, as well as inside my inner tribe, which is my VIP membership for my tribe sisters. Um, I will be sharing photos and videos and we're hoping that we can even go live while we are there with the kids. Um, 
and let you be a part of that painting process, um, that creative process, get to see their beautiful little faces and see the joy that it brings them. Um, but I can only do that inside of a private community so that we know that they're, um, that they're being protected. So if you join that paint party, um, or if you are a tribe sister, you will be part of that journey with me as well and get to experience it um, firsthand through our experiences. So I'm very excited about it. But yeah, just let me know if you guys have any questions. I'm just continuing to add a little bit of paint on where it's dried. Um, I'm doing, again, darker around the outer edges, um, just loading up my purple and my blue and my black. Just kind of brushing in anywhere that I see, maybe little white specks still showing through. And then I decided to add a little bit of like my perfect Perry around here where I'm gonna put the stem. And I think this is gonna be really pretty and just kind of give it a little bit of a glow. So it's gonna look illuminated up against this dark background. And then you can see, I'm just continuing to blend where these colors are still wet. You get that really pretty transition. And there's really no right or wrong that your background has to be here. This is a really relaxing part of the painting. You can just keep watching your colors blend together and seeing where you wanna add anything. Isn't that pretty? I love the colors already. I think I'm just going to go all along this edge here. Just kind of fan that out. Another reason I like the filbert, just those round edges gives a nice soft look when you're blending colors. Um, someone asked how many children are at the home? I think We've gotten a couple new babies over the last year. I think, I want to say it's 52 or 53 right now. So where I'm blending right here, and it, you can probably hear it, it, hear it touch the canvas. It's kind of like a dry brush. So... I've got some paint on the end. I'm just going against that edge there and then I'm just kind of fanning it out. And the background is already dry here. So it's kind of like dry brushing this color over top. Um, Sylvia is asking, is it better to get your background than use a tracer and draw? It just depends on what you're comfortable with. I chose to do it this way today so that you guys could see my sketch easier. Um, you could do the background first and then draw your sketch on with a piece of chalk for your outlines as well. So either way is fine. I, I don't always just have one way that I do paintings. It's usually... Oh, we're just going to have some purple in there. That was accidental, but we'll leave it. I kind of like the way that looks. There's one of our happy accidents for the day. So it looks kind of crazy right now, right? This is where you got to trust the process that it's going to start coming together.
I am going to get my number one from my brush set. By the way, oh, I just scuffed that up. Our brushes did sell out, and we are waiting on our next shipment. They should be here and back in the store, we're hoping, this Friday. So just a few more days, and you guys will be able to order the brush set again. It's a 15-piece brush set. And these are my signature brushes that I picked out the sizes and the shapes and all that good stuff, um, what I use while I'm teaching. So I'm just going to go around with a little bit of dark. You really won't see this black once we start adding the layers in, but it's nice to kind of get your shape on there again. I'm going to go in with my periwinkle color here up against this a little bit. I just want to see if I can kind of soften this edge. Maybe go in with some darker. So I don't want that white showing through. So I'm just kind of smoothing out my lines here. Of course, we'll be adding some feathers coming out of this as well. And when you guys um, do go on the trip, part of that trip um, that we spend as a team in the evenings once the kids go to bed is really learning more about um, what Rice Bowls does, about what the children's home does, and different ways that we can be a part of it when we are not physically there with them, but continue to help them on their journey as well. I think this time I um, I have been looking with um, my girls. I got them some new devotionals at Easter time, um, but looking for a few um, few devotionals for girls. Um, I'd love to, since we have the extra time in the summer, to spend some evenings with the girls where we can talk and they can ask questions and help them, um, you know, further their walk with Jesus and um, just help spread that truth and help them see that truth in their lives as well. So that's going to be something different um, that I'd really like to incorporate into this trip and maybe how we can combine scripture and art together, kind of like um, we've been doing in my group with our art journaling. So maybe something fun like that but I'd love, always love fresh ideas. If you guys have um, any recommendations, we would love to hear them. So this is going to be a little bit um, slower of a painting than I normally do with you guys on Facebook Live. Um, 
just because I want to add some of this extra detail in here. I could definitely paint this faster, but um, I want to add some different elements to this. So we're just going to kind of play with it and see where it goes today. So I'm still just using that fine um, brush right now. Oh, awesome. Sylvia said she ordered a second set of the brushes because the kids love the brushes so they can paint with me. I love that. That's awesome. And again, even when you're doing, oh, there's a little bristle here. Even when you're doing um, fine lines, a lot of times the mistake that people will make is not getting enough paint in their paintbrush. And then they can't make the brush strokes um, the same as I do. So make sure you're still loading up plenty of paint in your brush even if you're using a small one. I'm gonna get, since we're a little further away from that stem, I'm gonna get my bigger brush here. I like the way it blends better. What do you guys think about the light next to the stem? I think that's going to be pretty. So I'm just going to touch a little bit of this down. Got some stubborn spots out here that really don't want to fill in my little white specks. I love how these colors just glow. It's fun to be able to create that effect with our paint. So this is also great if you made your stem wide and you're like, oh, I wish it wasn't that wide. And come back with your lighter color around that edge and just blend it in. I'm just picking up a little bit of more of a purple with my blue just to kind of change the color in the background in a few spots. I'm liking the way that looks. All right, let's jump in to the inside now and we'll start building our way out. You guys are awful quiet today. Any questions for me while we're painting? So again, this inside, what I'm gonna call like an upside down heart is really, really dark. So I'm just using a mixture of the blue and purple and black together. And you'll notice when you're working with these darker colors, especially blues and purples, that it's going to look a little streaky on your first coat. So you most, most of the time you're going to need a second coat if that's going to be your main color um, and you want to let that dry in between. I think I need to change the angle of this just a bit. A 
we're going to rotate this so I'm going to grab some peacock teal. Make sure that's shaking up pretty good. I'm going to put it up here on my palette next to my blue because I might mix them just a little bit. So this is that oval shape. And again, you don't have to make this realistic as far as color choices, like your peacock feather that you may be using as reference, or if you're using mine as reference, you can change it up because it's your piece of art. You can make it whatever you want. It's already starting to look pretty. So I'm just kind of, since that inner color is still wet, I'm kind of just blending them. So there's like a really smooth transition. I'm gonna lower you just a little bit. So you can get a little closer. And I'm going to let this dry just a bit because you can see if I add to it now, it's just going to keep blending with that darker color. So if we let it dry, when we come back and add some more of this teal on top, it's going to be a lot more vibrant. So on my sketch, I kind of put that I was going to have this next section be kind of a greenish brown, but I actually don't know if I'm going to. I think I want it to be a little bit more vibrant, so we're just going to play with some different colors here. This is Paradise Green. I'm trying to add that so you can see my... Come on, camera. There we go. See the colors on my palette as well. I know it's a little hard to see because I've got all these colors on the underside. I need to scrape that off and I haven't done it yet. And then I'm going to grab some of our lime green. That one's sour apple. I want to show you guys my other peacock painting. So again, you can kind of get the idea. These don't all have to be realistic colors, um, but this is the peacock that I have taught inside of Tribe. Um, so when you become a Tribe sister, you get immediate access to all of these past tutorials for the past five years. So this is one, one of the over 175 that I taught in there, but look at these fun colors just vibrant and I love them. So I thought I'd share that as a little inspiration as we're working on this um, peacock feather today as well. I 
Hey, Angela, um, I don't provide printed like PDFs of colorless for my Facebook lives. I just share with you guys what colors I'm using um, while I am live. And um, the best place, because a lot of a lot of the colors that I use, you're not always going to find in the store like Hobby Lobby or Michaels. Um, I like to order them directly from DecoArt. Um, and Lynn, if you'll put the, if you have that, the deco art link, um, you can throw in the comments. That will take you to deco art's website where you can order um, the different paint colors that I'm using today. Um, and that is my affiliate link with deco art. So she will share that. Um, or if you'd rather have it text to you, you can also text all one word. Um, you can text deco art to my text number, which is 417-217-7044. So there's two different ways you can get that, that link. Let's go with, what do I want? Picking out my next brush here. Thank you. Okay, we're just gonna play a little bit. I'm not sure, maybe I want more of a purple color in here. We're gonna start with some of this paradise green. I love these cool colors together. So this is pretty translucent. So we'll probably want another coat on that. I think I like that color. What do you guys think? But I also think I may want to add a little bit of pink to it. So a little um, tip that you may not realize, colors that you could blend together. I've got teal in my brush or that paradise green, and it may scare you to think about mixing that with a pink, but because of where they are situated on the color wheel, if you mix those two together, the pink and that tealish green color, you're just going to get a pretty lavender. So even if I add some strokes in here, I know I'm not going to get a yucky muddy color by letting those colors blend. But I'm gonna add a little bit of pink for some vibrancy. I'm going to get my small liner and we're going to start with that lime green around this outline. You don't really have to worry about your edge too much here because this is where the feathers are going to start coming out. So as I'm doing this part, do the outline, I'm just going to very lightly start pulling some different feathers out of that shape. So these are going to be wispy. This is the lime green. But can you see how light I'm doing that and how I'm kind of doing like a flicking motion?
And you can have some short ones. I'm going to bounce in between a couple colors, so I'm not going to have all mine be just one color here. So you can have some short ones. And then if you need longer and when you're using like a skinny brush like this, like I said, don't forget to you know load it up. But maybe you need to start like after you've made this brush stroke and you want it to come out further, start halfway up that stroke. And you can kind of extend it out like that. It's starting to look kind of cool, don't you think? It does look electric. I love it. So pull up a photo of a peacock leaf if you need to. Again, mine's going to be a little bit more whimsical than this, but I do want you to see how they are. Those are just coming out of those colors there. And then down here along our stem, look at the angle at which they're coming out. Okay, so um, a mistake that I would see a lot of people make, I'm gonna move this so you guys can really pay attention to that shape. Um, when I would teach this at my paint parties is people would make their brush strokes come straight out. So instead of the angle, like they are here, right? Like what shape is that? That's the letter V. So I want you to think the whole way you're going down this, you're making the letter V. And what I would see people do at paint parties is instead of doing this shape off of the stem, right? So the V, the angles, they would come out and just do this. And it just doesn't look the same. Um, it doesn't have the same kind of flow to it. That's what's so beautiful about these feathers and the way that they are. They just kind of start flowing together and they're all angling up. Ooh, almost got my peacock feather all in the paint. So coming down here. going to kind of flow in. So you can see on the on the peacock feather, they were not super long and crazy. I tend to make mine a little bit more, like I said, whimsical. So I'll kind of pull out my feathers. You can see how I'm holding the brush now very lightly. Tiny little bit of pressure. Maybe have, as you're going out, some, some different curves, maybe even some curls added in. You can practice these shapes on a, on a scratch piece of paper and a mixed media pad. And don't feel like all of your lines have to be connected either. We're going for an idea of, right? We're not trying to paint photorealistic. So you can have some just random floating brush strokes. Look how you can add these lines and just start filling in to fill that shape out. Maybe another little curly cue coming out here. I'm gonna go back in the center here, get a second coat of this green. 
now that that's dried a little. looks like glow in the dark paint, doesn't it? So fun. You can decide how much space you want in between your stem here. I'm gonna put a little blue over top of that stem, I think. And I'm just going to keep going down. Don't worry if you get a little heavy handed. I pushed down a little bit harder right there. So maybe that's just going to look like there's some closer together. Remember, it's not about perfection. It is about playing and watching to see what happens and just enjoying the process of painting. So I'm going to do, if you want to literally do V-shapes, you can do one brush stroke over on this side, then connect to that line, do it over here. Remember R, stem is kind of curved a little bit so our V's are going to curve with the shape of our stem. I didn't use any yellow yet. It's still a little bit of yellow over here. I'm going to add a touch of that lemon yellow up here. So you see how you can just kind of keep building and playing with it. I think I want a little bit more pink in too. Maybe we should call this an electric peacock feather. Just some subtle little touches of pink. It's definitely an accent color, not one of the main colors. So if you're watching me over here on the palette, I've kind of run out of that paradise green. So I'm taking my sour apple and some of my peacock teal and I'm just mixing those two together and it's going to give me a very similar color instead of me grabbing more paint. Since I have plenty on my palette, I'm just going to mix what I have and make my own version of that paradise green.
I'm loving the way that it looks. I love the glow that we did behind here. See how that, that periwinkle that we did up against the stem, I think that's kind of helping give that effect of the glow that it has. And then I can even take my yellow and mix it in what I just did. If I don't want that yellow quite so bright, we're gonna mix it with a little bit of that blue and the green. And now we just kind of have a lighter kind of citron, yellow limey green color that we've created. So you really just want to keep practicing these quick movements. Because once you learn and kind of master this skill of doing your brush strokes like this, you can use this in so many paintings. And if you're saying, I can't do that, whether you say you can or you can't, you're right. So be careful what you're, what you're saying to yourself when you're creating. Your brain's going to believe what you tell it. It just takes practice. It's just a learned skill. Should we add a couple more curly cues? So another tip when you're doing like the curly cue shapes too, you've probably seen me move like my whole arm. If we don't and we just move our wrist, we end up with more of an oval shape instead of a circular shape. Let's throw some pink in here. So I'm going to jump back up here. I think I want there to be some more contrast between this oval shape and that green in the background. Remember, we were letting that dry. So when we go back over top, we have a little bit more contrast here. So I'm doing a little bit of pink and green. So when the pink and green meet, they are going to create kind of this, think of like a green and red, they're opposites on the color wheel. So pink and green are gonna do a similar thing and it's gonna kind of tone down the pink and the green. So if I mix them, it's going to take the pink away from that. Does that make sense? It's going to desaturate it. So it's kind of giving me, with not using like a brown, but it's kind of giving me more of this kind of tone. 
where that's like a greenish brown. So by mixing the pink and the green together, we can get that effect. So you'll see like where they blend, it almost looks like a brownish color, but a pretty one. And then you can still have some bold pink come on top of it as well. So your peacock feather, you can make it however you want, but I'm gonna add those two colors together. And I like the contrast that that gives that now. That stands out a little bit more. I want to add a couple more. It's more condensed up at the top. I was talking about using paint pens in this, but now I really don't know if I want to. Let me, let me just test this for a little bit. I don't even know if my white one's over here. I'm prepping my black one. Let's zoom out a little. So fun. And a lot of times people say, how do you know when you're done? So what I'm doing right now is kind of stepping back and looking at it from the camera at home. My tip for you is to take pictures on your phone. And if you're happy with the way it looks on your phone, then I think you're done. If you see something and you're like, oh, I could fill in a little bit more here, or maybe I want, maybe you want some long, big feather coming out. It can be as flamboyant of a feather as you want it to be. I like how they kind of just disappear, like they're fading into the background. So what do you guys think? Paint pen or no paint pen? I also have, is this the one I like? I don't think this is the one I like. Let me see. Oops. Let me see if I can find my other white paint now. I just thought we could add gold too. That was a fun little squeaky noise. This is my white Posca pen. I'm just gonna come in, I just wanna see if I like the few little accents. I don't even know if you guys can really see that from that far away. Let me get closer. You always want to do 
these when your paint is dry. It's a little bit wet in there. Got a little paint on my tip. Oh, I forgot about that metallic teal. Hold on. Let's play with this. This is just where you are just having fun. I'm just playing with some final accent marks, seeing what I like, what I don't. You're not going to know if you don't play. Trying to see if this is my gold. Yes, it is. So this is in my Amazon store as well. This is Art Owl is the brand of this. It's a super skinny, extra fine point paint pen. And we know I love gold. So I'm going to add a little bit of gold in here. just kind of making me want to scribble a little bit so mine are going to look more like scribble accent marks I love this gold How satisfying is that? Maybe it's just me. I love it. So fun. So we will have a post made. Um, over the next week. So be on the lookout on the Social Easel Facebook page. Um, we will be posting a flaunt and share so you can post your peacock feather that you did um, with us. You can also text me your paintings if you want me to see your paintings. Um, now that is not for critique. I don't do any kind of personal critique over that. But if you want me to see your finished work from today, I would love to see it. And you can text those to that phone number um, on the screen. Lots for you to do and play, and I can't wait to see these. This was fun for me to do again. I just love the whimsical style of the peacock feather and all these cool colors. So I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you Friday. Bye.